Are you wanting to upgrade your gaming setup and you just think, well, your picture just doesn't look that brilliant and probably it seems a little bit unresponsive or you just find that there's a lot of screen tearing and stuff like that. While these NDXT monitors may be the screen you're after, we've got one that's full HD, we've also got quad HD, one works at 240 hertz, and the other one will work up to 165. So let's have a look what comes in the boxes. Both monitors, or at least the contents, look identical. Even the monitors look identical. I've even already forgot which one's which, because there's nothing what basically says which one is which, other than the model number on the back and really small writing. Right, okay, so inside the box, you've got lots of plastic. It's all got recycle marks on it, so you can recycle it, obviously, if your local recycle company does actually recycle plastic bags like that. For example, for us, bags like this can't go in the normal recycling. They have to go in general trash, even though they've got recycling marks on them. Again, I'm not a fan of these plastic bags. I wish they would get rid of them. Now, obviously, Greta's not going to be too happy. She doesn't like plastic at all, as you know. But anyway, let's get on with it. So you've got a manual in a plastic bag. God knows why that needs to be in a plastic bag. You've got a USB Type 3 cable. You've also got a USB Type C cable as well. You've got the power adapter, so it's an external power brick. You've also got the, it looks like a free pin Mickey Mouse lead, as we call it, to power the power adapter. You've got, this one looks like it's going to be a HDMI cable as well. And then you've got your display port cable there. So you've got all the cables you'll need, which is good because a lot of monitors don't come with all the different connections on there. Otherwise, that's everything inside the box, apart from, obviously, the screen, which we'll come to in a second. Where can you go and meet hundreds of people just like you, strengthen existing relationships and forge new ones with vendors and distributors, and meet some of the biggest names in the industry, where you can go and see the newest tech and services that you need to make your IT business grow? And there'll be thousands of pounds worth of prizes up for grabs. Then what's more? You'll get that for a quid. TechMax 2023 will be on the 23rd of June at Magna Adventure and Science Centre near Meadowhall in Sheffield. This event will be over four times larger than last year's event, and this year's event will incorporate a live tech award, dedicated meeting rooms, demo and interactive areas, and up to 800 other techs just like you, Get registered now at tftmax.com. So let's have a look at the screen itself. So we'll start at the front. So obviously you'll be taking the energy things off of the corners there. They just peel off pretty straightforward. You've got a very fine bezel around the edges, probably a millimeter, maybe two at the most. And then you've got the bezel at the bottom, which says NZXT on it, sort of in a, a black on a really well, a gloss black on the matte black background, so it's sort of like a two-tone effect, which is sort of good because it's not going to glare too much at you. Now, if we look out around the sides and the bottom, you can see where it splits into two. You can see it's not the thinnest of screens, in all honesty. I've seen a lot thinner screens. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, and it's probably not going to hurt anything, but it does seem a little bit thicker than a lot of screens we are seeing on the market at the moment. Now, on the back, there are, well, not a huge amount to see again. It is very minimalistic, which is sort of thing what NZXT goes for, in all honesty. There's no RGB lighting or anything special on there. Doesn't seem to be any speakers or anything like that. At the top, it does say NZXT, so someone will know what brand it is if they're looking from behind. And there are some ventilation holes at the top just up here. Now, you've got your Visa mount here. So obviously there's four screws in there. You can fit a 100 millimeter visa mount in there. This screen unfortunately doesn't come with a stand as standard. You have to actually go out and buy one extra. You can either buy the NZXT one. They do like, a, I think they call it a small monitor stand. We've got a couple of them in. We're going to show you those in a few minutes. They do like an arm version as well to my knowledge. You can obviously tilt it and swivel it around on your desk a lot more easier or it will take any standard 100 millimeter mounting system which should be fine but again shame that you don't actually get a stand even if it was a basic one in the box to be honest I have a feeling a lot of people go and go see these buy it and go oh that's a good nice monitor expect there to be a stand and go 
what do I do with this? And then end up having to <laughs> wedge it in the corner of a, a desk or something like that until they get a stand. But anyway, you've got a release button there. That's for helping release the actual mounting system in there, which is pretty straightforward. You've got a nipple down here so you can use it to adjust brightness and other things like that on the menu system. You've got obviously the serial number there. And then all your connections are connections. You've got a display port. You've got two HDMI connections there. You've got a USB type C. You've got a three and a half mil jack audio connection as well. And these are USB type three connections. You've got the one what you tend to see more on a lot of peripherals. It's the more of a square shaped USB type three connection. And then your traditional rectangular USB type three connections there. And that whole there is for your power adapter. Otherwise, that's pretty much all there is to see on the actual casing. So inside of the box of the stand, this is what you've got. And in all honesty, I think the build quality of the stand or the feel of it, because it's all metal or pretty much all metal, feels a lot better than the actual screen itself, to be honest with you. You may even think about potentially getting one of these for a different monitor if it would fit, but I don't think it would, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a shame. If it came with, obviously, the connections on there to add another monitor on, like a standard Visa connection, I'd probably actually consider buying these for other monitors, which is a sort of a thing what they've probably missed out on there, to be honest with you. They could have marketed them as a product on their own. But even the base, metal, the stand, as you can feel, is metal. The only bits which are really plastic on here are sort of this inner hole here, which is for putting your cables through, for cable tidying. You've got sort of these little holes here. I think that's more for cosmetic looks and so forth. This is the bit which attaches to the monitor, which we'll show you in a few seconds, which will be able to swivel and tilt and slide up and down. The actual bit here, that's basically if cable tidying and stuff like that. I think actually looking at it, that's what you would actually attach to those little holes there. And you can adjust, obviously, the height you've got your cables, which is actually quite a good design, actually. I'm surprised others haven't come up with a similar sort of thing. You've got the base part here. It does give you instructions of how to adjust the screen, like rotating it, tilting it, moving it up and down and so forth, which is really good. This will peel off. It is a sticker, so you could potentially stick it on something else if you wanted as well. And then you've got this swivel bit here, so you could actually swivel your screen around if you wanted to as well. To fit it, it's fairly easy. You just get this bit here, and these are quite heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if adding th these together the stand itself is nearly as heavy as the screen, if not heavier. And then all you do is get this little thumb screw here, turn it, and it connects it in. It's as simple as that. So there you've got your stand, and as you can see, it's quite a good-looking stand, to be honest with you. I wouldn't complain about that stand at all. Obviously, you've got a manual in there as well. We're not going to read that. But to attach this to the actual screen itself, you get your screen straightforward and all you do is get this bit in here yeah and then you put it in at an angle like that and drop it in and it clicks in that's it your monitor is built if you do want to release this bit or remove it you can just press that button there and then it allows you to pull it off but otherwise once you put it in it clicks in and holds it in as you can see there So let's have a look at the movement options of the screen. Sorry for the glare, and I'm going to leave the energy bits on just for now. But basics is, if you want to adjust the height, it's very easy to do. You just basically push down on the top of the screen, and oh look, it goes lower. You want to go up, you just pull up. So it's simple as that, and it doesn't need a lot of pressure, which is really good. Some of them I know you have to really hold down on the base and the screen, and it can be a bit of an issue, and you think you're going to break it. You can also tilt very easily as well, as you can see there, and you can adjust it exactly what height you want and tilt it, which is good. Again, it doesn't have to be all the way up or down. You can have it in the middle, basically exactly how you want it, which is really nice. Then you can obviously swivel with the base. I would suggest holding the base just in case, but it will swivel and give you a swivel action there so you can adjust it to be viewed at a better angle if needed. On top of that, you can actually rotate the screen into a portrait mode either way. So you can go that way or that way if you wanted. That way you can get a full-size document on there. You could use this as potentially as a second screen. 
and then obviously get a document and read it like a traditional piece of paper or whatever. That's really up to you how you work and when you want to do it. Just bear in mind, whichever way you're going to do it, make sure you've got enough cable length over here uh, because otherwise it could pull the cables out as you're swiveling it around. But otherwise, it's pretty good. So you can basically turn it, rotate it, height adjustment, tilt adjustment. Can't really ask for much more than that, to be honest, unless you went for an actual proper monitor arm. Okay, so we've got both of the screens set up. If you're not sure which one's which, the one with the white stand is the HD version, and the one with the black stand is the Quad HD. Bear in mind, a lot of people think Quad, because Quad normally re represents 4, is 4K. It is not 4K, it's more like 1440p compared to HD. So don't get that mixed up, don't get me wrong. It's a lot better resolution and it's the main sort of resolution a lot of gamers will go for today, but it's definitely not 4K, okay? So that's not due to their marketing, it's just how the naming schemes work. So QHD is not 4K, so don't get them mixed up. Okay, so first thing to notice, you can see on this white screen here, I've got up on both screens, on the HD screen, again, all the colouring and everything is set exactly the same. So it's on 100% brightness, 50% contrast and so forth. You can see the screen looks a lot whiter or the white looks a lot whiter. Where on the left screen, it's got more of a reddish tint. Don't get me wrong, you could probably adjust it in the settings, but that's just something to note. Okay. Also, obviously, with the resolution being higher on the one on the left, it makes obviously everything look a little bit smaller. You can adjust that in your scaling settings. One of the first things you need to make sure when you have got these monitors set up is that you're actually using them correctly, as in you've got the HDR turned on if you're wanting it to. Don't get me wrong, HDR on these monitors is okay, but it's not brilliant. So just bear that in mind if you're wanting a huge HDR experience, you ain't going to get it with these. The Basically, what these are aimed at is high refresh rate gaming which basically means that it's going to show more, basically, information on the screen or a lot quicker. So, for example, you're going to get on the one screen 165, the other one you're going to get 240 frames per second, which means you can obviously see things a lot quicker, response, and it will seem a lot smoother. But one thing you need to make sure, first of all, is you right-click on the desktop, you click on display settings, it'll bring up this screen. It might look a bit different depending on the version of Windows you're on, but it's very similar. If you want the HDR option on, you turn that on. To my knowledge, only Windows 11 gives you the HDR option unless they've updated Windows 10 to allow you to do it, but I'm pretty sure it's Windows 11 only, so you need to make sure HDR is on. If not, then it's not going to show those extra bright sections on the screen as bright. And again, as I said, the HDR isn't the strongest on this anyway, so you may not notice a huge difference, and you might even prefer it off. Next, you need to make sure the resolution is correct. So the screen on the, for example, our left, should be 2560 by 1440, okay? It even says recommended, okay? The one on the right, which is a HD, that'd be 1920 by 1080, which is standard. But this is, that is, should pick up automatically in most cases anyway. The next thing is the actual refresh rate, which is a common thing what people don't realise. They'll go and buy a high for refresh rate monitor and go, oh, it's really good, but they haven't actually set it to run in high ref refresh rate. So what you have to do is go down to where it says advanced display there, and then it'll tell you about the monitor. You can see the model name and so forth. And a little bit further down, it says choose at refresh rate. Normally, as default, that is set at around about 60 or 59.95 hertz. Obviously, the higher you got it, the faster the refresh rate. As I said, the screen on the left, the max it'll pick up is 164.54. And the one on the right, so if I change it, which is display 2, is 240 hertz. So basically, the difference between these screens, and it's all, the only real difference we can actually find between the two is, this is a lower resolution, so the picture might not seem as clear, but because the refresh rate's a lot faster, it seems a lot smoother compared to this one, higher refresh rate, sorry, higher resolution, and a slightly lower refresh rate. If you're coming from a 60 hertz monitor, which is what most monitors generally are, what most people have, 
go into even this one at 165, you're going to see a huge difference, to be honest with you, with how smooth it is. Obviously, you go into that one, it's going to be even smoother, but there's less of a difference between 165 and 240 than there is 60 and 165. I personally went from a 60 to 165 hertz one, and I saw a huge difference. But when I've tested, for example, a 240 hertz or even faster, you don't notice it as much. And some people may not even be able to tell the difference at all. So just bear that in mind. So otherwise, the monitors are pretty straightforward. Again, you can use a nipple on the back. So if you would obviously press that down, it brings up the menu. Let me get it there. You've got the menu there, gives you picture mode. You've got brightness, contrast, sharpness, color temperates. You've got your OSD settings, so how big all this is, and languages. You've got other settings on there, so you've got free sync options on there. LED, which obviously turns that one off. You've got source detection, where it obviously you can set it up to be a display port, HDMI, and so forth, or leave it on auto. You've got mute, you've got volume on there as well. I'll double check that in a second. I didn't think there was sound on these, but let's just do a quick sound test. Okay, I've just done a quick sound test on these. There is no sound coming out of these monitors. I'm not sure why it's on the on-screen display. Maybe they use the same settings for all their monitors. Some give you the option of obviously having speakers and some don't, but there's actually no sound coming out of that monitor. The only thing I can think of is if you're using it to plug in a headset or something like that, you'll be able to adjust the sound of the headset from directly from the three and a half mil jack, but doesn't seem to be the speakers actually built into the screen itself. But otherwise, there you go. You've got two screens. Again, not sure why they sent us a white stand for the screen. Who knows? And a black one for this one. But anyway, you can have either or. Obviously, these screens do come in white as well. Obviously, that would match up with the stand, but it's totally up to you. Otherwise, you've got yourself two nice screens, high refresh rates. Ideal, I, what I would say is if you're a casual gamer and you're not playing on, let's just say, esports and stuff, I'd go for the higher resolution one with a slightly slower refresh rate. But if you're into the top end esports, let's say Counter Strike and stuff, and you want the fastest refresh rate and you're not too bothered about picture clarity, then I'd go for the full HD version, which is a 27F, and this one was the 27Q. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.